All right, welcome to Tea Time with Toya. I am your host, Toya. Today is July 13th, beautiful Sunday morning here in Detroit, Michigan. Um, before I forget, let's get a sponsor information out the way. Um, this is sponsored by Life Changes 2.myvi.net. That's Life Changer 2.myvi.net. Are you trying to lose weight? Do you want to get healthy and feel better? Are you trying to gain muscle? Why not do all these things and help an overweight child do the same by replacing one or two meals a day with a protein meal replacement shake by Body by Vi? For every 10 pounds you lose or 10 pounds of muscles you gain, the Visalis will donate 30 to 60 meals to an obese child to help them do the same. So you can lose weight and make a donation to a child in need to help them do the same, which this is a really good program. I've actually participated in it. I've lost 15 pounds so far. I'm still working on more. So I've already did my donation. Um, and when you go in to do your donation, you can actually select organizations that are around in your area. Um, I just did a child most in need, but you could do Gleaners, um, their Salvation Army, I believe. There's a long list of organizations that you can choose. And also, you can always con contact the company if there's a specific organization or a specific child that you want to donate for. So you can just contact the company and let them know that's where you want your donation to go to, and they'll see if they can work that out. So again, that's lifechanger2.myvi.net. That's L-I-F-C-H-A-N-G-R-2. The number two dot m y v i dot n e t. It's also listed below on a link below. So go in there for more information or to place an order. So today's um, topic I wanted to talk about was body odor. This is actually an issue that we had at my job recently where there was a person that we worked with who had the smell. And it was funny because nobody really knew exactly where it was coming from unless you were close to this person. Um, you couldn't tell that the smell was coming off. And so one of my coworkers went to management in regards to it. And it was something that has already been brought to their attention. But unfortunately, they didn't really know how to handle it because it can be a very touchy um, topic to discuss when it comes down to personal hygiene because there are so many factors that could be included in it. It could be a medical condition. Um, it could be medication that they're taking. It could be just their culture or ethnicity. Um, you know, there are some cultures that find um, the musky smell of a man as attractive it's a manly smell to them so it's part of their culture then you have the other issue where some of the spices and things are so strong that some for some people it comes out of their pores like curry for example curry is a very strong smell um and with me living here in in Detroit I'm very close to Hamtramck which is like a melting pot in its own so certain areas you can smell when they're cooking with the curry you can smell that and that smell sometimes lingers on people's clothes or even in their pores so it could be an issue like that um, another one as I was looking up different topics for this or different information for this was mental issues which was something I didn't think about you know, if a person is depressed, they're less likely to take care of their hygiene. Um, so that was another issue in there as well. So it's a very sensitive topic to um, come to somebody, approach somebody with. And then you have that issue where, it, you know, well, people don't want to say it, but some people are just lazy and just don't do it. Or they just don't have the desire to keep up with their personal hygiene. And they may hide behind one of these certain issues. Like they say, oh, well, I'm depressed or it's just my culture or I'm on medication, you know, or give you some excuse to where you can't do anything about it and everybody in the office just has to suffer so you have to be careful on that as well so it is a very very sensitive topic now listed below just in case I forget throughout the discussion um, I do have the websites listed for the information which I'm giving you um, there were different websites that I went to which I'm going to talk about so those are listed below if you want to look at those links um, one of the links I would suggest to especially if you are someone who has to have this conversation with this with somebody in your office um, there is a website it's uco.edu and they have a PDF file where it gives you steps to follow in order to talk to an employee about the different um, body odor issues and how to deal with it it gives you steps by steps it's eight steps all together so again it's going to be listed below and I would suggest that you take a look at it because again this is a very sensitive topic for some people I mean it's not hard it's not very easy to go up to somebody and say hey you stink and it's causing a problem for everybody because don't nobody want to smell you so you have to be sensitive about it and 
approach it in a special manner. Now, one of the things that was talked about um, was that the person who should do the talking to this person should be management, the person that they are directly reporting to. So, um, but you do want to advise HR that this is a topic to go over because they may have their own procedures or protocols. So by all means, this is just kind of to help you work through it or get to know steps or things. This is not your protocol. You always want to contact your, go with whatever process your company has set up. It's just that this is a difficult topic that everyone doesn't really talk about. And I just wanted to put it out there. So um, one of the sites was askmanager.org. And they went through and they talked about the fact that this can be an awkward situation to talk to. Um, and they actually listed a situation on there where it was one of their co-workers who had a smell to them. But they also noticed that their hygiene was lacking. Like they thought they came in with dirty clothes on. Um, their clothes may be torn or ripped or just look raggedy and just not presentable or professional so they first sat down with the employee and they first mentioned the clothes they said get that out the way first so you know that in their situation they could wear jeans so it's like I know we can wear jeans but you want to make sure they're not torn or ripped you know that they're clean you know that kind of thing so you get that part out the way and then they went into talking about the hygiene and they actually have a little clip here that says you know you want to say something like this I just want to mention um I want to mention something else as well. It's awkward and I hope I don't offend you. You've noticed you have a noticeable odor lately and it might be a need to wash clothes more frequently or shower or it could be a medical problem. This is the kind of thing that people often don't realize about themselves. So I want to bring it to your attention and ask you to see what you can do about it. So to me, it's always important. I let people know whenever I'm about to say something, I know they're not going to like, you know, I'm not trying to offend you, but hey, you stink. You know, of course, I'm not in management, so I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have this conversation. But I just thought it was an interesting topic because of the fact that, you know, how many times have we had to deal with this throughout your life? And it could be an employee with bad breath. Who knows? So this was one of the things, you know, they they said this is an approach that you can take. And again, that was on AskManager.org. Um, which I'm gonna come back to this because there was something else on there too that I wanted to talk about. But I'm gonna come back to that. Um, another one was on you, well, uh, Bob, you smell. That was that was the one. Um, it's hrmorning.com, and this was a topic. It says, Bob, you smell. What to say to employees about um, embarrassing personal hygiene? And this was actually based off of a book well off of um paul falcone um i think he did like a seminar a conference in san diego and he also wrote books i think on topics like this but he's the vp of employee relations for time warner cable in los angeles and again like i said he's also an author so he was going through some different things to and giving people things that they could say and you know some sample dialogue to have discussion but the one i like the most which is what i wanted to mention on here was the last one It says, um, if you wouldn't mind, though, I prefer not to have to address this again. It's a bit uncomfortable for me. So this is something you so is this something you feel you can fix here on out? So (laughs) I laughed when I first read that, because how are you going to put that off on you? You're talking to somebody that this is all pointing to. So this whole conversation is in regards to this person stinking and you don't tell them this is uncomfortable for me. So, I don't know if that conversation came at me. It's uncomfortable for you. Well, how, how do you think this is for me? I'm the one you talking about. So, it's, but, but no, because it's uncomfortable for you, I should take care of this? No. How about I want to take care of this because I don't want people to talk about me behind my back? So, this was kind of humorous to me. So, uh, if you're going to use this, I would change that a little bit. You know, and say, you know, something along the lines of, you know, I know this is uncomfortable for me. So, I could just imagine how uncomfortable this is for you to be having this discussion. So, you know, something along the lines of that, but be a little more sensitive because, again, you're not the one being talked about. You're just the one having the conversation with the person. So just imagine how they're going to feel on the opposite end. Um, So (laughs) that was what. And again, that one was Bob, you smell. Love the title. And then here's another one um, that I looked at, too, which was WikiHow. Um, and it's work with a person who has body odor and they were given some tips. Now, I necessarily wouldn't do these steps in the order that they gave, but I do 
agree with what they said now one number one they said avoid i'm gonna just go through the steps first the first one is avoid gossiping about the co-worker's body odor number two is approach the co-worker and speak with them in private about their body odor and third speak to your human resource department if the pro- problem is unavoidable um, number four is a limited time you spend in the co-worker's presence and finally number five decorate your desk with items that give off pleasant smells so number one about the gossiping okay people are going to talk about people that's just how it is no matter where you are where you go people are always talking about other people we are a very judgmental um human race so we're going to talk about other people um so before you start talking about other people though what i would suggest is that you do number two first so you go to the car worker and you talk to them about it in private especially if you're you're on them turn on your you have a good relationship with that employee or with that co-worker so you go to them and you talk to them and if you don't have a good relationship go to one of their friends and say hey you know your friend becky over there she's not smelling too cool you should talk to her about it because i know y'all cool like that you're on that level with her i don't want to go over and say something because i'm not trying to offend her now if she refuses to go then you go have a conversation with her um but just remember again to be a little sensitive about it like i don't know if you're aware of this but you know there's a older you kind of have a odor to you and i don't know if it's a medical condition or something like that but i just wanted to let you know because i don't want people talking about you behind your back like me because i'm gonna talk about you if you don't take care of it <laughs> now if i know it's a medical condition and i know you can't help it and then you know I'll be like, eh, she can't help it she got situations going on she can't help it you know so and you don't want to spread rumors either you don't want to put other people's business out there unless they tell you that you can so but i would do number two before doing number one and then maybe follow up with number three to where okay yeah i just talked to someone so I told her that she has this odor. I know some other people are probably going to come to you as well. So you may want to go sit down and talk to her just because of the nature of the situation. You know, and that's if she was responsive to you. If not, hey, I tried to say something to her, but she uh went off on me. So, okay. So then you have um, an unlimited time. Sometimes that's not capable it's not something you're able to do which is limited time that you're in a co-worker's presence because depending on the job that you do would depend on whether or not you're actually able to do that I know when I used to work at the bank you know we worked our stations were right next to each other so if you had one that smelled in there there's no avoiding it there was nothing you could do about it they just smelled um especially and then it's kind of hard too to talk about people especially if you know that they're trying to do something about it or they're worried about that being an issue so they do things to make sure that they don't have that kind of smell like you know their clothes are clean you know they use perfumes and things like that which you want to be careful of um but they do that kind of thing to kind of mask that smell but this one said limited timing the co-workers presence so if it's possible then go ahead if not hey so then number five decorate your desk with the items that give off pleasant sales uh they have all kind of items now but then i don't know like in my workplace we have a problem with that as well because some people are very sensitive to some of them fragrances and their allergies will kick in and they'll get to sneezing and having issues and then they go into management where it's too much perfume on here you know so you have that as a backup issue too you know it's corporate america is just what it is it's corporate america it's a whole bunch of grown folks in the workplace with each other for eight to ten hours every single day and just like a house where grown folks grown folks really don't need to live together in the same house it's the same issue when it comes down to your job you know you have a whole bunch of grown folks and you're basically living with each other because you see each other more than you see anybody else you're like i said you're with each other eight to ten hours a day five days a week you spend majority of your year with these people that you work with so guess what just like you don't get along with all your family you're not gonna get along with everybody you work with and something you do is gonna bother something somebody else does and then people are very sensitive now about everything but that's a part of being an adult and working in the workplace so one of the that's one of the reasons why i'm doing this type of blog is because you have to be aware of things you can't just be insensitive and it can't always be just about you so think about the person that this is actually going towards you know maybe they can't do anything about it maybe it's a mental issue you know they might be depressed and just not want to get up maybe it's medication that the doctor has them on like my mom for example she probably gonna kill me if she find out I said this but it's a medication that she's on it's an antibiotic she feels she stinks she feels she has an odor coming from her now I can't smell it but then again 
I'm probably not the best person to ask because I have selective smelling. And people usually laugh when I say that, but it's the truth. Some stuff I smell, some stuff I don't. It's just how it is. And sometimes I'm very blessed to have it because, you know, people are around me are talking about how bad something smells. And guess what? I can't smell it. So, <laughs> which is fine with me. But then, you know, some stuff I can smell. And it's like, woo, if I smell it, I know it's a real problem. So you just want to be sensitive about it and understand we are all people and just kind of imagine what what if you were on the other end? What if you were the person that this was in regards to and that this was focused on? How would you feel about that? You know, so keep yourself humble, especially if you're one of those people that actually have to go and speak to someone with this issue. So just keep that in mind um, when you're talking to people. So again, um, another plug, visit lifechanger2.myvi.net if you're trying to get healthy like I am. Um, actually, this morning I did something different because, um, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a meal replacement shake. And I did a little, something a little different this morning. I did one where it's just spinach and grapes, which doesn't sound too good to put some baby spinach and grapes in with some protein shake mix it sounds really disgusting and I was looking at this green mixture concoction in front of me like oh my god I can't believe I'm about to try to drink this but you know what it was actually pretty good it has a clean refreshing taste to it and I was thinking next time I might actually put some cilantro in it because I know cilantro is very good for your digestive system and is good for instances like this of our body odors and things like that it's kind of like a balancer for your body um, cilantro is and if you use cilantro is too strong for you you can also try parsley with that as well but again um, I don't know if I said this early because this isn't my first take at doing this but Anytime somebody gives you natural remedies, you always want to make sure you look into it as well so that there's nothing that may harm you. Some stuff you may have a reaction to, especially if you're on medications and things, you want to be careful about natural remedies that you take. Um, I, for one, prefer natural remedies over a lot of the medications that they give you because less side effects. If you're using something that is plant-based or food-based, it's something that you're going to eat anyway. Like cilantro is a seasoning. People put it in their sauces and all all kind of Mexican dishes all the time so to it's a food so you can ingest it and your body can break it down and use what it needs out of it a lot easier than if you go to the store and get some man-made concoction to drink and to that will eventually do the same thing and then you have other issues that you have to worry about which you all know what I mean what I'm talking about because you watch the commercials too where they say you know side effects may include bleeding um, internal organ malfunctions and may also cause death I mean who wants those type of side effects at least I don't you know and then that's putting toxins and things in your body so I like natural remedies if I can help it um, some instances you can't like pain medicine I have yet to find a natural remedy for pain medicine that actually works as well as the man-made medications so that's one of those things where it's just like okay I'm gonna just have to suck it up and I'm gonna take these pills because I'm hurting <laughs> so it's one of them things but as I was researching this and looking at things which is what I told you guys I wanted to go back to askmanager.com um, askmanager.org I'm sorry they were some of the comments below were talking about how um, to clean your hair because I guess you know it might be your hair that stinks and they were saying that they use a baking soda mixture um, baking soda vinegar mixture so at first I'm like who in the world would put baking soda and vinegar in the head I mean it's gonna eat at your scalp you know that's what we do when we kids that we use to make the volcanoes explode is baking soda and vinegar so why would I put that crap on my head but when um, I actually looked into it the baking soda is used as a shampoo and the vinegar is used as a conditioner so you're gonna rinse all the baking soda uh, mixture out of your hair really well before you add the vinegar mixture so they don't come in contact with each other and the baking soda is to clean your hair and the vinegar is to make it soft and manageable and they actually said it works good as a detangler um, to keep your hair from getting entangled so I don't know if you saw pictures of me or not but I have very curly hair and I wear it natural so the tangle part sounds really good to me and I'm actually going to try this so the baking soda part is is that you take one tablespoon of baking soda for every eight ounces of water um, and you shake it up really well 
and then you pour it out onto your scalp and you really want to make sure you're concentrating on your scalp because that's the part that really needs to be clean that's where all your oils and deposits and things settle down to and then they say that as you rinse your hair out the baking soda will actually clean your actual hair but it's your scalp that you want to concentrate on um so and then it also has one on there for a hard water if you have a hard water there's a different recipe um it says you want to start with half a cup of baking soda to 16 ounces of water um and again that's for hard water and they say you know you add or take away as needed um just the baking soda okay it says depending on how long your hair is or chemical buildup you have whether it's curly straight etc so you can adjust the amount of baking soda you need depending on that so again this is going to be on how to boost your immune and that's the baking soda shampoo so for the vinegar hair rinse you want to use one to two ounces of vinegar for every eight ounces of water. And again, you know, you rinse the baking soda out and then you again put the vinegar mixture in there. You work it through with your fingers and stuff and then rinse well. Um, and they say your hair will not smell like vinegar. So I'm going to try this as um, both of these are ingredients that most people have in their cabinets. And I, I really kind of like the sound of, especially the detangle part. Um, they said if you use just the baking soda and you do not do the vinegar part, because the vinegar actually balances the pH level of your hair. So um, if you do the vinegar part, um, if you do the baking soda part, make sure you do the vinegar part because otherwise you'll your hair will be brittle, and dry, break off, that kind of thing. So again, make sure you do both of them. And always check on information that people are giving you. Don't just trust it. So I know I'm giving you this information don't have to trust me you can go online website link is listed below and you can look at the same information that I looked in and make that decision for yourself um, but they also have some other good um, information on here as well which I was going to look at like your body pH body detox you know body care so on and so forth and I thought this went along with what I was discussing with the body odors natural remedies to kind of help so that's it for today's show I hope you enjoyed it I hope I was able to help you um, if this is something that you have to do or maybe you're the person that gets talked to maybe it opens your eyes up so you're not as insensitive or you don't get as offended by or are upset with the person who's actually delivering the information because it's more people involved you always have to look at the bigger picture so that's it for today again I um, hope you had a very very wonderful weekend and I will talk to you guys again later so thank you bye bye